Income Tax 2022-2023, HSA Moving Expenses, Deductible Part of Self-Employment Tax and Self-Employed SEP Simple and Qualified Plans, Tax Software Example. Let's do some wealth preservation with some tax preparation. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as excel practice problems pdf files and more like quickbooks backup files when applicable so once again click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it here we are in our example form 1040 populated with lacert tax software you don't need tax software to follow along but it's a great tool to run scenarios with you can also get access to the form 1040 related forms and schedules at the irs website irs.gov irs.gov starting point as usual we have the single filer mr anderson no dependents w-2 wages 100,000. we've got the standard deduction 12,950, bringing us down to 87,050 taxable income we're mirroring that over on our income tax formula excel worksheet 100,000, 12,950, 87,050. page two calculating the tax there's the tax calculation 15,000. the withholdings getting us to the 226 refund which is mirrored over here on our tax formula but our main focus is up top on the tax calculation for page one for the taxable income and we're focusing now on the adjustments to income which are on schedule one line 26 so let's open up schedule one line 26 so there's the schedule one and i'm going to go to page two of schedule one which is our focus and we're going to start here with the health savings deduction. So we got 13, line 13, uh, the health savings account deduction. So we might dive into just the, the ins and outs of the health savings account in uh, a future presentation. But uh, the, the bottom line is that you might be able to get a deduction for it if you have basically a qualified plan for the health savings account. And then the question is, are, is the health savings account being accounted for? by your employer in which case they may account for it on the w-2 form if not then you might have to use then the schedule here form 8889 which will then pull on to schedule one let's take a look at the form 8889 and here we have the health savings account and then box one you got check the box to indicate your coverage under a high deductible health plan so you have to get into the ins and outs of what a high deductible health plan is which once again we might dive into the topic in more uh, depth in a future presentation but just so we can see the links and the software for now we're going to say it's a, a self only versus a family plan and then we had line two hsa contributions you made for 2022 we're going to say it's a 3650 we uh, maxed out what we could here and then that pulls down to the bottom line hsa deduction and this is going to be pulling into the schedule one i'm going to unclick this and go to the schedule one line number two which is pulling into line 13 now scrolling back down that pulls into line 26 which is going to go on to page one of the form 1040 and we have it right here the 3650 now we could mirror that in our software on this side we could say okay in our in our worksheet the are these are the adjustments to income so i'm going to say adjustments to income and let's add a couple lines here insert i'm just going to insert and let's just call this one an hsa and i'll just make it a nice quick and easy one and say that the max here we had was the 3650 now you could get more complex in terms of of uh the amount but i'm just going to make it like one line item and let's actually put it on the outside here so it just goes directly into our outer column calculation i'll put some borders around it and where's my borders borders there borders here and then i'll just sum that up boom and that pulls in then to page one so there is our adjustment small adjustment small adjustment 
percent of the 3650 uh, to get us to the 96350. And if I go back on over, I also decreased the income to 30,000. So I'm going to decrease the income here to, let's say, 30,000. For this example, I'm pulling over. That gets us to the 26,350. So there's the, the 26,350 standard deduction at the 12,950 gets us to the 13,4. So there's the standard deduction 12,950 gets us to the 13,4. I'm not going to complete the bottom of it, but move on instead to the moving expenses. So let's go back to the original numbers. So now we're back to the 100,000 and the 12,950. And then let's go then to our schedule one page number two and we've got our moving expenses uh, for members of the armed forces now remember we're severely restricted to the moving expenses you can't just do it for the job it's more restricted to the armed forces and even then you you would possibly need to look up and see whether or not they are they are uh, reimbursed so very specific type of scenario will not come up as often as it was. You're more likely to get questions about moving expenses than, than the, have the capacity to deduct them oftentimes. But let's look at the 3906 just to check it out. So here's 3903, I should say, moving expenses. And so you've got your information on, on down below. So let's populate this one. Now, I'm not going to go through every step here, but the general rule or the general concept with this software is we're going to be marking it off that it's for armed forces move due to permanent change of station. That's when it would be applicable. And then you've got this kind of similar framework that you might have seen if you, when we had the moving expenses that were allowable for normal moves for the job, miles from the old home to the new workplace, miles from your old home and so on and so forth. Can you deduct lodging and travel and whatnot? I'm just gonna pull that over just so we can see the calculation on this form and see the connection of the forms and then you could dive into this form in more detail if uh, you have this situation come up. So we have the calculation. By my calculations, we are only- This then pulls in to the schedule one. So I'm gonna go back to the schedule one, page number two, and there's then our moving expenses that are pulling in. That of course populates down to the bottom here and that pulls into the form 1040. So on the form 1040, we have our moving expenses taking our total income down by the 3,000 to the adjusted gross income, 97,000. I'm not gonna go on onto the Excel worksheet on this one. Just wanna give a general idea of the links. It's a pretty straightforward uh, type of situation there as well, because I wanna move on to the next one, which is the deductible part of self-employment tax, which gets a little bit confusing. So let's go back to the original scenario. So we're back to just this 100,000. Now, when, when I go back here and I look at my schedule one, line two, we've kind of touched on the concept of this self-employment uh, self tax uh, deduction, which is line 15 here I'm on, deductible part of self-employment tax, because we touched on it when we thought about adding income to like a schedule C, another type of income. And then we had to, to look at the idea of all the other things that are impacted. So remember when you're thinking about income, if it's W-2 income up top, then you're still paying Social Security and Medicare through payroll taxes, which are withholded from your W-2. So it's all kind of taken care of and we don't really have to do anything on the form here. So we could just focus on the income tax. But if you have other kinds of wages that didn't have payroll tax related to it, no Social Security and Medicare withheld, then the question is, are those kinds of incomes subject to Social Security and Medicare? And which is a big deal because if they are, then you could have a significant other tax that would be applied that you have to deal with. And so the, the common form there would be the Schedule C, business income. So let's add business income and just see all the, all the changes that happen to this form again. One of them being that we get to deduct half of the self-employment tax. So let's get a, get a feel for that. I'm just going to go back on over to the to the income and say we have a Schedule C. We've got basically just a an income statement for the Schedule C. Let's say the income was fifty thousand and we had expenses. Let's say advertising of twenty thousand, bringing us uh, thirty thousand of income. So if I go back to my forms, then now I have a Schedule C 
So another added income, which is in essence an income statement. So I'm just gonna say 50 minus to 20, which is the 30,000. That's the bottom line. I've already deducted some of the expenses because these expenses are basically business deductions. These are the most common and normal kind of deductions for an income tax system because they are the ones I needed to deduct in order to generate the revenue. Would not be fair to tax me on gross income. It would only be fair to tax me on you know, the net income. Otherwise, I'd be favoring certain types of businesses that have fewer expenses in order to generate revenue and so on. And so this amount, as we would expect, will pull into the income schedule one income line from the schedule C, and then we'll pull into the form 1040 uh, here. So we have it there. That makes sense. But we also have this this situation with the equivalent of payroll taxes because the IRS back to the Schedule C wants to say, if you're self-employed, then we want to not only hit you with the, with, the, with the federal income tax, we want to hit you with the Social Security and Medicare tax. And they'd probably say it like this. We want to allow you to participate in Social Security system for your own benefit, right? So that's going to be the idea. So we're going to have to pay the Social Security and Medicare paying into that uh, kind of system. Now they're trying to mirror that with what happens in a corporation with a corporation what happens is that we as an employee get withheld from our paycheck by the employer social security and medicare which are the payroll taxes as well as our federal income tax and then it's all kind of taken care of already so we don't really see it when we when we do our form 1040. uh but for so that means on our and but we also have the employer that has to also match the social security and medicare so part of it's paid by the employee part of it's paid by the employer but the employer also gets to deduct the the wages of the employee and their payroll taxes so they want to mirror that on our side saying okay there's the thirty thousand. we're going to calculate the tax for social security and medicare equivalent to payroll taxes here in essence but charge you both the employee and employer portion on your net income and so there's that that pulls into the 1040 page number two which is going to be here so now we've got other taxes 4238 in addition to the in, the income tax and then we also have to say but wait the the company gets to deduct part of those taxes uh so so i should be able to deduct some of that half of it on the schedule c but i can't deduct half of it on the schedule c to mirror what happens on the corporation because i had to get to that thirty thousand in order to calculate the tax and that would be a circle reference so that's kind of why you get half the deduction as you can see here calculated half the deduction which pulls on to the schedule one page number two and so there's that there's that deduction that we get we'll dive more into that deduction when we get into the schedule c itself but just remember that if I go back to the Schedule C, we have a lot of more complexity just with a very simple Schedule C that we put into play. So, there, so just remember that if you're doing tax returns, think about what clients that you want to be taking on. Do you want to be taking on business clients uh, or not? Uh, do you want to do le less complicated tax returns with less bookkeeping work and less of these laws that are related to business income, social security, and, and that kind of, of stuff? Uh, and, and that means you'll have lesser profit margins and you'll do more tax returns most likely or more complex return which might have more bookkeeping and whatnot which means you you do less tax returns but have a higher uh, profit margin and then and then you got to stick to whatever plan you have because the clients will try to job creep you they'll try to you know you'll, you'll end up working for nothing you know, if, if, if you don't be careful so but also just note that you've got this other qualified uh, business income which is another kind of complication on it now the next thing we'll we'll take a look at is another area that's kind of subject to if you're a business uh situation so the schedule one page two is going to be the sep and the simples and whatnot so if you have a schedule c business then you might be saying hey look i would like to to get as much tax benefit as i can for my uh for my my retirement plan so if you're if you have a W-2 income, 
here, then you might have a, a retirement plan like a 401k or a 403b provided by your employer, which is a great tool to invest in because the idea is you're gonna be putting money into these accounts and get into tax benefit when you put the money in. And then when you take the money out, that's when the tax happens. So you get to defer the tax. But the 401k plan has usually a very high dollar amount that you can put in to the 401k plan. Uh, and you might have matching and whatnot with a 401k plan. If you have a sole, if you're your sole proprietorship, then you, you might say, well, I want to set up a 401k plan for myself. So at least I can put more money in to the 401k plan. But the 401k plan is complicated to do man to manage. So you might say, well, that's not worth my time. So then you're, you could say, well, I'll just put money into an IRA. So we'll talk about an IRA later, but if you put money into an, you can put money into an IRA, which is kind of similar to putting money into a 401k plan. Remember that if you put one money into a 401k plan, then if I look at my form 1040, that money will not be in box one of the W-2 and therefore it's already kind of been deducted. I don't see the deduction happening on the tax return. It's just not included in my line 1A box one of the 10 of the W-2 form. So it's already been deducted before it even reaches the the tax return in essence is the, is the general idea. If you, you don't have someone else taking the deduction out of your W-2, then we have to deduct it ourselves. And that's kind of what the IRA does. So it acts kind of like a 401k, but we have to make the deduction, which means it's going to be deducted as an above the line deduction here. Now, the problem with an IRA though, is there's very severe limitations in terms of how much money you could put into an IRA and you, may, you don't get like a matching thing or anything like that with the IRA. So then you might say, well, I can't really set it. I'm a sole proprietorship. I can't put money into, I could put money into an IRA, but I'm limited. So what else could I do? What else could I do? I could set up something similar to a 401k plan that's more simplified, which will allow me to put more money into, uh, into it than I would with a, be able to put money away with an IRA. But I also have, which could be a benefit or a detriment, right? I also have to, to apply that to whoever my employees as well. So if I have employees, then the question is, you know, if I set up a SEP or simple, it's kind of like a general retirement plan that I'm, that I have to set up for everyone. So you have to take that into consideration. So then you're going to think, you know, do I want to, do I want to just put money into an IRA or do I want to set up a 401k plan, which is possibly too complex for a sole proprietorship? Or do I want to set up a SEP or a simple so I can put more money into it if my business, you know, starts doing well and I have the capacity to put money in and possibly help out my employees by giving them at least some, you know, retirement plan that, that may be more beneficial for them than simply, uh, putting money into an IRA. Okay. So if that was the case, then I can say, let's, let's jump on over and say, we're going to go to the SEP and I'm just going to say that we're going to maximize the SEP. Now, the th some things that are, that are nice about say a SEP, for example, and we'll, we'll, maybe we'll talk about this separately when we get to a schedule C is that you, most of the time when you put money into a 401k plan, you it's the, the money is on a cash based system. You have to put it in before the end of the year, in this case, 2022. So you don't really have that last minute tax planning because you don't really know. And so, so, so you have to put the money in beforehand in accordance with the rules of like a 401k plan with a fairly high threshold. But if you have your own business, then you, you're, you might not know how much you can put into like a SEP, for example, which is restricted in part on how much earnings you have on the schedule C. So you would like to have a plan and you may be able to with like a SEP, for example, uh, ca like put the money in later after the, after the cutoff, after 2022, so you can actually do your tax return and then figure out how much you can put into the SEP and try to maximize the SEP calculation as I did here, right? I just said, maximize my cal calculation. So I could already do the tax return and then say tax, get, tell me how much I could put into the SEP. And then if I have the cash flow, possibly I can put that money in at that point. Otherwise it's confusing to know how much you could put into the SEP because you don't know how much income uh, you're going to make. And so that's a kind of a, that's a nice tool with the IRA. You have a similar tool 
in that you, you could put the you could put money into the IRA up until I believe the point that you file the tax return, not including extensions, is the general rule. So at least you have a little bit more time to determine past year end whether you can put money into an IRA and then take the action even after the, the year has ended. But you're severely limited with an IRA. You can put more money oftentimes into a SEP depending on how much income uh, you have. Like if I had my, like this number will go up, for example, if I go back to my Schedule C and I said that my income was, uh, let's say 700,000 or 7,000. Let's make it, let's make it 90,000 here. And then I'm going to go back on over. So now I can put into it 13,240, right? Which is, which is more than you can put into an IRA generally. It acts the same way. Of course, here, we're going to sum it up down below that pulls into the, to the 1040 as an above the line deduction. And so there we have that. So I won't do that in the Excel worksheet again, just note for now, I just want to kind of list out these items and see how it all kind of links together. Remembering that if we apply a schedule C to, to our, to our tax return, that opens up a lot of, uh, a lot of different components on the tax return, just in terms of a data input standpoint. And it also opens up a lot of opportunities for us to think about where we can, where we might be able to benefit more planning type of situations, such as setting up like a SEP, uh, uh, for example.